In today's episode, we're going to share with you um, a little bit of the research that we've done on the big question, are we buying a new boat or are we buying a second-hand boat? And I think it's normally a very tough call to make for first-time boat owners, although I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer. Um, this totally depends on your take on your budget, your mechanical, technical know-how, and generally whatever blows your ear back. So it's a very personal choice. But initially we were very inclined towards second-hand, and I'm going to share just a couple of, of pointers that um, I've just made notes of. Um, the first major thing that was quite obvious to us was you get far more boat for your dollar with a second-hand boat than what you do for the new boat. We've done, uh, there's so many websites that you can go search for boats. So in our budget, um, we've realized we were looking at the kind of a 45 footer that you can get up to 52 foot for the same type of money. And um, obviously more footage, more storage space, more cabin space, overall general more space, which is very important to us because storage space is, is quite a number one on our list of, of what we need in a boat. The second point that was quite important to us was um, depreciation. It has already taken its toll with a, with a second, second hand boat. You know, with, a, with a, a, buying a new boat is like buying a new car. The minute you take it off the showroom floor, it already loses value. And we were looking at boats, say, between six and eight years old. And according to a lot of blogs that we've read and articles that we've researched, the de depreciation downward curve was, is at its worst, so it, it plateaus out at, say, six years old. Um, in the blog, I've also got a link there on David Pascoe, how he explains how you can calculate depreciation to get the depreciation value. And the other advantage, point number three, um, that we were looking at is the second-hand boat would be already kitted out um, with most, if not all, of the electronics that, that we need, you know, like autopilot, fish finders, radars, transducers and the likes. And the boat has already gone through a couple of tax and turns, so um, obviously it got from point A to B, and assumingly the electronics would still be in good working order at that stage. But the third item that we were looking at is the fact that a second-hand boat has already gone through the shakedown cruise. So any faults or defects or whatever would have been dealt with, and um, at least your ego remains intact that you didn't inflict the first ding on it. Another point to consider as well, what we thought was you've got the advantage of commissioning a surveyor. They see what we can't. I mean, we, we look cosmetically at a boat and obviously you try and, and, and see as much as you can. But these guys spend on average three to four days examining the boat entirely and thoroughly. So when he finally gives his stamp of approval, you can just happily smile and sign and sails away. That's as easy as that. And there's um, a couple of websites, I've got a link there as well, but there are so many surveyors around, so there's no shortage of them. I think it's just um, obviously do some research up to who's the best or who you feel comfortable doing it. And then one of the last points that we would also like to share with you is the fact that there are just so many second-hand boats available. You could shop till you drop. By merely just Googling it, you'll, it's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sites coming up. There are just so many boats available. So yes, that in a nutshell is, is, is the basics that we were looking at, looking at second-hand boats. So Pietro told us about um, old catamarans and, and the charm of old catamarans, the price is a very, 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 um, very attractive one. But there's a caveat. Um, you start to pay from day one on all the broken things. So you need to find, replace the ropes, you need to go through the bulge pumps, the, the water pipes, you need to make sure that the yucky ones about the toilet pipes is clean. And yeah, that is yucky. I saw many times how Dallas and those guys have tried to fix it and even and the winds also, it is just yucky and you have to do that. Um, so that is not, not for me. Uh, the other one is you must make sure the sails, you need to replace the sails. You can of course buy the boat and you can sail. Um, 
And I'm sure you can, if you just stay along the coast or close to the ports, it is okay. But you cannot cross an ocean with that. You cannot be serious sailing and, and before you actually just look at every, every aspect of every rope and every bulge pump and every sail. Of course, on a new one it will also break. It's not that I am saying, is but it will definitely break with, uh, with an old boat. So having said that, um, with, the, with all of these things what we have mentioned now before, um, you know, that new feeling is like a moth coming to a candle all closer and closer. My advice is, don't go look for new boats, or don't, don't, just look at old boats, because the moment you start looking at new boats, and you smell that new, you know, like new leather seats of a car, there's nothing beating that smile and you just want to have that one and of course all the shiny toys is there so uh, it was it was maybe a mistake but let us let us just look at, at the real things that is there so the, the, the big difference between a new boat and old boat is that you start to pay actually you actually pay the premium up front so, uh, old boat, the things you buy, say for 100,000 you buy something and then you need to replace 30 odd thousand dollars of, of, of spare parts and sails and ropes and things like that. But you can decide and it is at your own pace that you can pay for that. Well, if you buy a new one, you get all the ropes, all the bulge pumps, all the new sails and all of the things up front. You pay for it now and it is already there. The second thing is that the, the, if things break, the warranty, right? If the things break on a new boat, you have actually have one year grace period, if you can see it that way. If something breaks, and of course if you're in a port and everything is, 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 is set up that you can actually get a new bulge pump or a new whatever is breaking, then you can get it replaced and it will be replaced for free um, under, under warranty. It is true that you, you might um, lose that value if you if the moment you <laughs> the moment you break the champagne bottle over the over the hull, yes, that boat is devalued. Um, you maybe lose like 10%, 20% of the value right there. I don't think you can sell it right there for the same price, but it you lose that that little bit of a, of a thing. The other one about new boats is the, the space is optimized. Um, if you look at old boats, you can see there's sometimes places where you can look at things and you can see if they just move this pump a little bit that way, then you could have, have more space to put something in there too. But the new boats, they actually went through with all the moans and gripes and groans from, from the previous owners, um, from the previous years, the previous models that this they need to optimize the space also you can kind of like decide whether you want to have uh, the colors of the boat you, um, you, you you buy one boat and you can say this boat must have this colors and must have these beds and this arrangements and, and I want it with this kind of electronics I want it with this water maker I want. so you can from the beginning if you buy a boat an old boat that is what you get um, of course you can get something else but with, by looking at another boat but that is not the same because then you get a different water maker there than the one that you wanted here with a new boat you can say what water maker what generator all of these things you can actually determine and that can come in um, and then of course not just because I'm an electronic engineer but all these nice fancy things like a fancy new camera if you unbox the first time a camera or the unbox the first time a, a phone it is just nice so all electronics is actually also the latest and greatest. Like for instance, the sonars and the radars. You get late, no, the latest radars and sonars are digital, which means they send out a very small chirpy sound. They call it also chirp radars and chirp sonars. That is actually a pulse they sent out. And, and there's a, a, a range of pulses that they sent out. Where the old, old radars, they maybe just have an analog watts. They sent a lot of watts. So, First of all, the battery power is, is reduced from the new, new instruments. And um, so that is also for me a very good one. And then you have touch screens, you can touch things. It is so nice and things just work. 
not sure how it will work, a touch screen when the sea is blazing and there's a storm and things like that. So I think we still need, need the, the buttons, but sometimes it's nice to pinch and zoom, isn't it? Um, we know now we want a catamaran and also from our side, our point of view, we want also a new catamaran. The next question is what size of catamaran and size does matter, right? Um, the bigger the better. I think it's only cell phones that guys want smaller. The smaller the, the more better a cell phone is. But the rest we want bigger cars, bigger houses. But it's not to say a bigger house, um, if you take now a boat house, is the same. So if you we went on a 40-foot catamaran, me and my, my brother, and we crossed the, the Atlantic with that 40-foot uh, catamaran, and it was it was very capable of crossing the, the, the ocean. But for me it was just a little bit a tad too small. Um, I'm two meters tall. Uh, I think in the other language, the old age, the prehistoric language, I think it's six foot four and a half or something like that. So I'm a pretty tall guy. I don't want to sit there and, and, and in my house for the rest of my life, walk like this. So I want to be able to stand upright and I will still have the space above me. So I don't want, I want that. Um, so there's also that a 40 foot catamaran, the one that we had was if, if we went down the waves, if the waves comes and picks us up, you surf and that little bit of speed that you pick up, every, if every wave gives you that little boost, then your journey is so much shorter um, days wise. But uh, I've been taught a 46 foot catamaran of the same model, the same make, is, is actually surfing much longer on the waves. So it boosts your journey with that extra two or three knots for maybe not for three seconds, but maybe for five, six seconds. I'm not talking about stormy where you need to put out the drought anchor and you don't want to surf. I'm talking about normal conditions where you just sail and it is normal sailing conditions. A big catamaran, if you look at now, there's a very sexy one coming out now. Mm very sexy. I must tell you, I looked at that 50 foot catamaran and it was just so nice. But the thing is, that 50 foot catamaran, you need to park it somewhere, right? So if you go to a marina, sometimes you have to go into a marina. It's not that you always will be at anchor. So sometimes you have to go into a marina and then that big catamaran cannot fit. And if it does fit, you pay double the price than, uh, than for a manual. So we need to look always out for that. I think a cat normally pays almost doubled for, for all the parking space. I don't know what they call it, parking space. But they also can park in at the end. They can dock at the end of the, of the, of the jetty. But if it's too big, it cannot even come in. And you need to maneuver that thing. Of course, a cat can maneuver. We already spoke about it very, very nicely. But you also need space to even to turn the cat around on its axis, so it is it's not always good. Uh, a, a bigger cat, if you if you look now between a 40 and a 50, the big cat, of course, it can take very big sails. Um, so in light winds, you have a wider base, so you can have a bigger sail. And 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 light winds, in light winds, you want bigger sails. You want to use the boost of, of that little wind. So that is a that is also a, a thing to say. And then. If it's bigger, we also have more space for engines. I looked at that 40 catamaran and, and 40 foot catamaran, and it was very difficult for me to get this big body inside that small space. It was, I would almost say, it's almost impossible for me. So from that side, we, we cannot go really for 50 because 50 is a tad too big, and a 40 is definitely a tad too small. So we will go for the middle one. So it will be in a range of, of 45 foot. Um, so I think now we also know we want a catamaran, it must be new and it should be 45 foot. It's time for you to get out of full screen, hit the like button because from now on it's just a normal pointy thing. Subscribe please if you haven't subscribed. Support us on Patreon, like our pictures on Instagram and follow us on Facebook to become part of our social active experience.